uh, our birds are very skittish with anything new. Mm -hmm. uh, so they have to get used to anything that is new. They've yet to land on the tree. Uh, but the more exciting development, I'm glad you asked, Sarah, about uh, the birds of Oakland, California in our apartment, is that Milo Bird, mm -hmm. who is a.k.a. Fat Mr. Milo, a.k.a. the Fat Doctor, because he looks like Doctor, <laughs> but he's fatter. Um, he has taken to uh, uh, both Cooper and, and Milo, the rescue birds that we got, are a little more skittish than Doc Doctor flies all over the place, does whatever he wants. Uh, but now Milo has taken to walking down this little ladder we have in front of the cage and exploring the floor, which is something that he had not done before. Now he is doing it because food has landed on the floor. And again, he's fat Mr. Milo looking for food wherever it is, despite that there's a yeah. three dishes. He needs yeah. the floor that also landed on the food, uh, uh, the food that landed <laughs> yeah. on the floor. Yeah. When you're food motivated, you get uh, brave. Oh, man. Uh, uh, and he's he's just having having a great time. But I, I took a little TMZ video of it for uh, for my for uh, my wife, Ashley, and she was very excited. Fat Milo it seems like you could train him to do some pretty crazy stuff just by using food. You know, uh, uh, we, we need to put more work into it because he loves food. In fact, uh, I don't know if I've ever done this. This is very embarrassing. Uh, uh, this is a thing that happens every day in my house. I'll feed the birds and there's one cage that has two dishes and one that has one. And I'll, I'll walk up, I'll, I'll fill the dishes with food and I'll walk up and I'll say, affecting a cowboy dialect, well... It's a big breakfast for Mr. Milo. <laughs> and I'll put it in. And then I'll, I'll try to distract uh, Mr. Milo with this copious bounty, only to have Cooper, the shy, reserved, gothic professor, mm -hmm. uh, you know, have a private, reserved meal for Professor Cooper. <laughs> uh, it very rarely works because Milo likes to eat all the food. Yeah. It, Milo's like, no, it's all mine. Thank uh, you. Yeah. He's like, no, no, no. I prefer to start with the private reserve meal and yeah. then I'll move on to my Ooh, gigantic trough. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, not a similar issue in my house, but an issue of if Otis were to, when the cats are eating, you know, he's kind of curious, but he'll, he'll hang back because they'll swipe him if he gets too close. Mm -hmm. When they're eating, it's like, you don't, you do, do not get near us. But they're also trying to get into his food. It's not fair. Yeah, that's that selfish cat behavior. If you that ask is, me. yeah. Well, I, I think they 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 have some boundary issues that they have to uh, that they have to sort through. Sure, sure. <laughs> Who doesn't? Amazon certainly does. That's what we're going to be talking about in today's show. Oh, GDI what? has become animals and food. <laughs> become. Actually, somebody, some very nice person emailed us today saying animals and food is why they actually took the time to support us on Patreon because of the GDI conversation. Hey, listen, you know, you, you can like tech till the cows come home, but you mm. got to eat. So you and animals are, you know, they're, they're uh, we're all part of God's creatures. Let's, uh, let's do our show in, yes. I don't know, like 15 seconds. Is that good? Sounds okay. Uh, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm with it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, I'll count us in then. Here we go. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. Thanks to everyone who supports independent tech news directly. If you're not already, become a DTNS member right now. Do it right now. Patreon.com slash DTNS. <laughs> This is the Daily Tech News for Thursday, November 29th, 2018 in Los Angeles. I'm Tom Merritt. And from Studio Feline, I'm Sarah Lane. From Oakland, California, I'm Justin Robert Young in a hoodie. And uh, from a soggy greater LA area, I'm uh, Roger Chang, the show's producer. Uh, today, today it is a little soggy in Los Angeles, which is unusual for us. So we're all fascinated with the water falling from the sky. Uh, however, we've got some Amazon news to talk about. They are, they're the next in line. Apple, Google, Facebook, they've all come under the gun. Amazon is going to be next. But let's start with some tech news you should know. Google Assistant on speakers and smart displays now includes a pretty please feature for families. It teaches kids to be polite. It was first announced back at I.O. earlier this year. Notes and List will soon support a few third-party apps, Google Keep, AnyDo, Bring, 
and Todoist, and broadcast replies, which allows two-way communication between a smart display and a speaker, and phone and home devices comes out next week. Plex now offers access to Tidal's high-quality music streaming service. The $10 a month service is only $9 if you are a Plex, a Plex Pass subscriber. <laughs> or if you can say it. Yeah. Which I am, although I'm not a Tidal subscriber, so... You know those scams that cause a fake antivirus pop-up to appear in Windows and then it's followed by a phone call from some nice person that asks you for money to fix that fake infection? Well, Microsoft and authorities in Delhi have tracked down and arrested 36 people at 16 locations where those people were running exactly these types of scams. I think a lot of people thought that you'd never be able to catch these folks. That's crazy. I know. Oil companies and trading firms can start finalizing crude oil deals on a London-based blockchain platform called VACT, V-A-K-T, created by a consortium of oil companies, energy trading firms, and banks. Uh, Geneva-based ComGo is going to provide financing to the VACT deals integrated right into the blockchain. The system will replace significant amounts of paperwork previously required and lower the costs of trading as a result. So who knows? I mean, I'm being pretty optimistic here, but... It could lower the price at the pump, maybe someday. Nice. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit more about a bad headphone vulnerability. Oh, yeah. Listen up, folks. <laughs> Germany's Sekorvo Security Consulting disclosed a vulnerability in Sennheiser's head setup software. Sennheiser was installing a self signed root certificate with an encrypted private key into the trusted root CA certificate store. The problem was the key can be extracted using a man in the middle attack on all otherwise secure websites the user visits. The passphrase Sennheiser CC was stored in plain text in a configuration file and was the same for all installations. The encryption key was found by reverse engineering the software binary. Users are urged to update the software and make sure the original certificate has been removed or blocked. Yeah, uh, it, it, you know, you should go check out something like Hack5 or Security Now if you really want to get deep into understanding all of this. But the short version is uh, the root certificate was not properly secured in such a way that once you were able to extract that key, you could then spoof any website for any computer that had this software from Sennheiser installed. And it was software that that allowed you to, to work directly with the browser, with the headphones in, in a little better way. Uh, you, you could have all kinds of complaints about why can't we just have analog headphones, you know, but but uh, this, this was supposed to provide better audio for you. And if you're buying Sennheiser, you're concerned with better audio. Yeah, yeah, you were trying to spend on a premium product. Yeah. You're concerned with better audio, but a lot of folks who would have um, the headphones in question and had ha had used the software in order to you know pair them with computers aren't necessarily even going to see the story. So that's where I think it's you know it's it's sort of the most troubling, right? I mean, we've explained it. I don't know how this. I I understand how it works. I'm not the kind of person who would ever be you know in these root areas to 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 figure this out myself, but. But but then how do you explain it to you know somebody who got a cool Sennheiser headset you know for Christmas last year that they need to make sure that their certificates are updated? I, I would normally say just keep your software updated, but there's some confusion on whether the Sennheiser update actually removes the bad certificate or and not. Exactly. So, yeah. Well, let's move on now to South Korea. South Korea indicted the CEO and eight other employees of a company called Top Tech Co. on suspicion of leaking. Samsung's flexible display technology secrets to a Chinese company. Top Tech makes automated equipment for display panel production, but the company denies the claims of wrongdoing. The nine people are accused of creating a separate shell company that received information from Samsung Display and then sold it for 15.5 million won, which is about 13.85 million US dollars. So yeah, it's kind of hard to, to, to figure out here if you're confused out there, but Top Tech is saying we didn't do anything wrong. Our employees who created a separate shell company did something wrong. Yeah. Uh, so even, even though that includes the CEO of Top Tech, Top Tech itself as a, as a company may not be held uh, responsible for this, but it, it's a huge bust. Well, and and obviously it's corporate espionage. Uh, mm -hmm. I wonder whether or not this is something that puts any kind of damper in in Samsung's plans, considering the fact that they have always been, uh, in addition to creating top of the line phones, 
they, like all uh, uh, manufacturers for the stuff that they're in, are playing in an increasingly commoditized game. And if the word's already out on the uh, the stuff that they're doing, then that kind of shortens some of that runway. Yeah, it's hard to say. Uh, if we start seeing a, a bunch of, of companies coming out with flexible displays that are very similar to Samsung, uh, I suppose Samsung could try to pursue a remedy in court about that anyway. Uh, I'm sure they have patents filed on all of this stuff. On the other hand, uh, uh, it may be that knowing how the display is made is not the same as being able to make it, right? Like it, it takes some expertise and capacity to be able to make these displays in the first place, which, which Samsung does. Uh, so it may not be as easy to imitate as the folks who paid for this information. Well, it might be. But it also depends on where they were getting it manufactured. If they were getting it manufactured in China, and now it is Chinese companies that are making well, the display makes it. That's the key. Okay, okay. So they they make it. Well, yeah, but yeah. even then, look. But what, once it gets to China, man, it, it is the wild west out there. Mm -hmm. Well, and how sucky to be the CEO if you truly didn't know that this was happening with eight employees that work directly for you or mm -hmm. under you, anyway. The CEO definitely knew this was happening. I don't think there's exactly much right. Yeah. Yeah, that's for sure. Cancel uh, the Christmas party. The BBC reports that innovators in Togo, uh, Togo is a West African nation right between Ghana and Benin, are taking some of the 500,000 metric tons of e-waste to the country imports each year and turning it into robots. One example is a spider-like robot made from a discarded 3D printer. We see a fully BB who made that also made a 3D printer from other discarded parts. He takes the robots to schools to try to foster student interest in science. He was inspired by Gnuku Afate, who made the first 3D printer in Togo and took first place at the Barcelona Fabrication Technology Conference in 2015. Now, don't get me wrong. This is not to minimize the problem with e-waste that Togo is facing. Uh, the BBC article does go into the fact that a lot of times they have to turn waste around and send it back to be properly recycled uh, if they want to do that to Europe because they don't have the proper facilities for that. But I like the idea that at least a few folks are trying to figure out how to reuse and, and turn this 500,000 metric tons of electronics into something useful that that potentially could help students, et cetera. I'm I'm very curious to see what the the uh, you know where, where the trajectory of the e waste problem goes because I, I you know even colloquially and I'm sure everybody listening to this has had that that problem where all of a sudden you go into a bag or a closet where you've kept stuff that the last time you went in there was all very 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 useful and now you look at it and you're like none of these plugs work. Not none of these cords make any sense anymore. Everything has been totally different. Uh, uh, you know, things move so fast, and yet uh, uh, the the e waste is uh, the shadow it leaves behind. Yeah, there's so many problems with e waste from not properly disposing of it, right? Because uh, you have to do something extra if you want to properly dispose of it. You can't just put it in your bin uh, like you normally would. Two, even when it's properly disposed of. You know, the companies that are collecting all this stuff in the U.S. and Europe generally do export it somewhere. Uh, and then what happens to it when it gets there? So, I again, I'm not trying to to be someone who says, see, it's not a problem. You just have all the people in Togo turn it into robots and it'll be fine. Uh, but, hey, isn't it better that some of that happen and, and experimentation happen and maybe oh. start to spur an industry there uh, if we're going to have this problem before we finally get around to figuring out how to solve it for real. I mean, look, all, all us dilettantes in the Western world are all going to be, uh, you know, living our comfy lives when the, 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 the Togo gigantic robot spider starts dominating the globe. I think these guys got it going on. Yeah, uh, more power to you down there in uh, Togo, Mister Fully BB. Keep your robots going, and maybe inspires the you know the the next big startup uh, mogul uh, to come come from West Africa because he took this robot to a class and got somebody thinking. I mean, some of the great art installations of the world made from trash. This is mm -hmm. this is one mm -hmm. step further and cooler. Yeah. Nintendo saying that it has been humbled by its fans loyalty and quote has issued new guidelines on sharing gameplay video and YouTube that lift most of the previous restrictions and no longer require people to register for a revenue sharing scheme. <laughs> the only requirement now is that you add your own creative input or commentary. The exception to that rule is if you are sharing short screen captures using the switches 
built-in tools. Video makers who follow these rules will be allowed to monetize videos without sharing any of that sweet green with Nintendo. I love the idea of an apology turning into, we're humbled by how loyal you are to us. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, even though we treated you so poorly on, as far as YouTube videos go for years, you've stayed Hashtag loyal. humbled. Thank you. <laughs> Blessed. Blessed. Yeah. Uh, uh, look, Nintendo really misjudged this. Uh, this was a dumb plan from the from from the jump if you're unfamiliar with it they had a system in which uh, uh now the way that video games are discussed and shared throughout the internet is through live gameplays on twitch through recorded <laughs> gameplays on youtube and obviously shared throughout social media they decided that they were going to play middleman on that because the sweet sweet money was going to be too much for them to bear going into other people's pockets uh uh when in reality hey look if some kid's gonna get paid to advertise your 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 games like Super Smash Brothers, which is why they want to you know repeal this now because they have a massive game uh, that is coming out that is going to be very popular on these platforms, then uh, I think they realize let, let's not screw around with something that's already working for every other video game creator. I, this you can use this uh, this this decision you know as a weapon in your rhetorical argument about copyright either way. You can say, see, we don't need to change laws because eventually companies will realize the right way to do things on their own, even if they aren't forced to. Or you can say, man, if the rules were that Nintendo had to do this from the beginning, we wouldn't have had to wait years for them to finally get around to figuring out this is in their best interests. Yeah, I mean, look, if, 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 if Nintendo got to the right position, it's just a shame that they uh, had to be so Nintendo uh, about the way they got there. It's a him, a Mario. <laughs> it's a me, the middleman. Thrott.com executive editor Brad, Brad Sams has a new book out called Beneath the Surface that describes, among other things, Microsoft's potential Surface roadmap in the book's final chapter. You might say, well, this is all speculative, right? But Sam's has an excellent track record with his sources, and he writes a few interesting things. Perhaps a Surface Pro tablet with USB-C could be coming in Q4 of 2019, about a year from now. A Surface laptop running on an AMD processor might arrive toward the end of next year. Next spring, Microsoft might show off an ambient computing device that responds to your presence. Low-cost Xbox One S models could potentially be offered without a drive and maybe also a reimagined Surface Studio desktop with a modular design, and <laughs> last but not least, a foldable device, often called Andromeda, might arrive next year, but be more like a PC than a phone. Yeah, that Andromeda, it's its like uh, its like the, I don't wanna say it's a white whale, that's the wrong metaphor, but it's its sort of, a, it's a unicorn, right? Everyone yeah. uh, everyone thinks they've, they've seen it and then it never appears. And for a long time, it's been presumed that this would either be a tablet or a phone because of the foldable uh, nature of the, of the leaks around it. Um, but Sam's is saying it might just be, I guess more like a tablet, but on the PC end of, of tablets, uh, like a hybrid. Uh, I mean, geez, I, although, I don't want to. I don't want to take a dig at Microsoft because they have been good at uh, their hardware over the last five years. They've they've created really good products. It's fourteen percent of their revenue now, and they are you know in a running race to be the most valuable company with uh, right alongside absolutely, Apple. Absolutely, absolutely. So I, I don't want to take this as a dig, but the Andromeda thing just doesn't that just read as CES like all over it that we're going to see that. And <laughs> it's just it's like in, in a bygone era, and I don't think it's this Microsoft. I think it, it, it's it's a Microsoft uh, of of the past. Like that would be mm. the thing you'd see at CES, and it would just never come out right yeah. no in the bill gates era right yeah. where bill gates gave the keynote at ces every year yeah uh, you, he would have shown you this this is akin to the tablet uh, exactly exactly the big, the big table right yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh uh that being said holy smokes brad sam's calling his shot uh, uh that that would that would uh reverberate for years to come like moses with the tablets we're gonna be <laughs> referring to this uh for years and years yeah no brad sam's is a great guy uh i've had the pleasure of meeting him a couple times at ces as a matter of fact uh and he's he's not only a pleasant uh, fellow to, to chat with but he's a really good journalist and really good at cultivating sources it's it's a thing that i'm horrible at myself uh and so i admire people who do it as well as he does uh putting it all in the last chapter 
chapter of your book. Brilliant, first of all. Yeah. Uh, One more thing. Promoting the book. <laughs> Go check out the book, folks. Uh, but also uh, just just a, a great a, a, a great rundown of of his his prowess at saying like, okay, here we go, folks, you know, call me in a couple of years. Cause he, he, he has these things going through 2020 and let's see how they match up. Obviously not every one of these things will come true because even if they're all true right now, companies change their roadmaps and modify things and kill product. Oh, sure. Right. So, but he's saying, as far as we can tell, this is what they're thinking at this moment. Well, you know, Justin, you mentioned boxes full of cables that no longer work or uh, have, have any use, you know, to have a lot of, USB-C <laughs> cords. Oh, really? So the Surface Pro rumor is actually something I might be interested in. <laughs> oh man, I'll tell you what we we need we need to we need to figure out a cord for cord trade lane because uh, I I've had my switch die on me plenty of times with, with nary a USB-C cord. Give a cord, give a cord. Yeah. Live in the now, man. Yeah, Live no in kidding. the now. Hey, folks, if you want to get all the tech headlines each day in about five minutes, be sure to subscribe to DailyTechHeadlines.com. So uh, a couple things going on regarding Amazon in the news today. Germany's federal cartel office has begun an investigation of whether Amazon is abusing its market position in relation with third party sellers. It's looking into how it ends its relationships with third party sellers, the timing of payments to its third party sellers, the shipping conditions when Amazon handles the shipping for them. Uh, this isn't the first investigation into Amazon in Europe. The European Commission is also looking into Amazon's dual role as a retailer and a marketplace. Uh, if you're not aware, Amazon sells things directly as, as Amazon. They buy things wholesale and then they sell them to you. But they also operate something called Amazon Marketplace, which allows others to sell things through the Amazon system. They've been doing that since 2002. So the European Commission is looking to see if Amazon's house brands are hurting the retailers on the marketplace platform. In other words, is Amazon looking at all the stuff the marketplace people are doing and going, hey, that, that's a cool product. Maybe we should come up with our own house brand version of that and put it into competition. Recode has a really interesting article about how retailers are starting to get tired of this. They use a company called PopSockets as an example of the problem. Uh, PopSockets got tired of Amazon uh, demanding lower prices or demanding the pop sockets spend more money on marketing in order to stay as a wholesaler to Amazon through retail. So pop sockets decided to stop selling to Amazon and instead sell to a company called iServe, which sold things on Amazon. iServe is one of those third parties. Well, Amazon notified uh, pop sockets that iServe would not be allowed to sell pop socket material as a matter of policy, although unaffiliated merchants, in other words, merchants that got a hold of PopSockets products without any kind of relationship with PopSockets would be. That would mean that PopSockets couldn't sell their material with the manufacturer's warranty and with their own QA process. You would only be able to get their products from third-party sellers who couldn't give you that stuff. This is all in advance of something called One Vendor where Amazon is going to try to bring all those independent sellers and the big brands into the same back end. And some brands are being notified that they're only going to be allowed to sell to Amazon. In other words, they won't be allowed to sell on Amazon Marketplace, where they would control the sale price, run their own promotions, and more importantly, get to keep all that data. Remember, Amazon is becoming a bigger and bigger advertising revenue generator. They want that data. It's not a new policy, actually, but Amazon hasn't enforced it always in the past. So now they're starting to crack down. They're also adding to the policy that a retailer can't sell through their agents, licensees, or other representatives. In other words, they, they can't say, oh, okay, we're not selling to Amazon. We're just going to sell to these other people, but we're not selling on Amazon. So it essentially, essentially what happened to PopSockets, you either sell to us or you can't sell to anybody that sells on Amazon. They have to find it some other way. Amazon often uses this data, by the way, to create those house brands we were talking about earlier. So a lot of people are attributing this to the fact that Senior Vice President Doug Harrington, who has been running the retail side of Amazon for 14 years, now is over the Amazon marketplace side of things as well, and is applying some of that retail mentality Amazon just says, we're trying to make it easy for people. It's confusing sometimes when they think they're buying from Amazon and they're not. We just want to clear up that confusion, have fewer differences in price among the same thing. It's all about the user, Justin. The, the, the thing is, though, is that 
well, I'm sure there are exceptions, but as a frequent Amazon customer, I don't care. I just want the thing. So Amazon saying, you know what, we, we just want Sarah to be less confused about third party sellers versus Amazon products themselves. Kind of BS. Uh, yes and no. Uh, uh, there, uh, there are a couple ways that you can deal with Amazon. If you are a small, uh, uh, retailer, like let's say a, a, a mom and pop game, uh, company that has games like the contender and action news available, <laughs> you would, uh, uh, either sell directly through listing on Amazon and then you ship the product yourself. That's one way to do it. The other way to do it, if you're a little bit bigger is that you send products to Amazon's warehouse that allows you to control uh, uh the you, know, you are still getting paid from that directly but now amazon can offer prime shipping or if you are a big volume player like the ones that we are talking about here amazon is actually buying at wholesale a large volume of that moving that into their warehouses then whatever they do with that is up to them and, and their business from there now what they want to do is flatten that out a little bit. They want to make it easier for somebody to walk in and just get the most bang out of the Amazon buck. What they don't like is when you search for an Amazon product and you've got all these listings that all have the exact same picture and are offering different prices, but maybe there's hidden shipping on it and some offer prime and some don't. And many times those can come from the same source, right? It's just different people. They're, they're selling to different places and it is hitting Amazon in in one way so i can i can uh, uh understand and sympathize with amazon's position saying hey look it's very hard to make amazon a shoppable website considering how many products we have on here how many people we deal with to do it it takes management however what they are their their, their complications are twofold number one like tom said they are also in a position like grocery stores like walmart like Target, like Whole Foods. They have their own products that compete with other name brand products. And they use the sales data of what is flying off the shelves to determine who is going or what kinds of those products they are going to put on the shelves right next to the other people that they are also taking money from. The other problem is they're the everything store and they are always going to be under increasing governmental scrutiny, specifically in Europe, because it's Europe, uh, uh, but also in America, where now anti-competitive behavior is going to be magnified or the idea of anti-competitive behavior is going to be magnified because they are such a big player. And as brick and mortar retail dies, and now we're in a situation where like the idea of opening up a Walmart, my, me and my wife are joking around. If they opened a Walmart in downtown Oakland, would people be like, oh, cool jobs for people like what a quaint cool thing that's coming to our town in a way that would <laughs> not be the case in the odds would not be the case in the 90s when big box stores were the were the enemy uh they are amazon's going to be the bad guy as these other forms of buying stuff start to fall by the wayside yeah and uh, when you start to think about it uh you bringing up walmart made me think about the fact that Walmart used to be Amazon, right? Like you're saying, the attitudes have changed. Uh, I dug up a 2003 Motley Fool article uh, that pointed out that at the time, it was 15 years ago, Walmart accounted for 28% of Dial's sales, 24% of Del Monte Foods sales, and 23% of Clorox's sales. And Motley Fool said, if Walmart has too much power over these companies now, what will happen when Walmart share hits 50% at the end of this decade? Right. And Walmart didn't even have the complicating factor of allowing third parties. Right. You didn't have a flea market happening inside Walmart like you essentially have happening inside Amazon. What happened to Walmart was Amazon came along and they no longer have that dominant market share because of that. So the, the, the curious question that we will leave as an exercise for the audience, uh, who is Amazon's Amazon? Well, who and also uh, the, 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 the question then became. Look, Walmart, as many, many, many of these kinds of retailers, but Walmart was kind of the most famous for being uh, non-negotiable on, hey, this is what you're selling it for, and this is where we're going to put it. And we're Walmart. Either, yeah, and either we're going to give you this gigantic order that you can build your entire business on at a fraction of the price that you normally sell it, or you can kick rocks. Uh, th th they were a bully like that, and Amazon is not quite there yet, but you might think that the more they edge toward it, the louder it's going to be as 
we are all more uh, uh, plugged in to the the ups and downs of Amazon than we necessarily were with Walmart, where one might have not been in your town. Yeah, maybe Walmart ends up becoming Amazon's Amazon. Uh, also, I've, just a side note, in 2009, I found an LA Times story talking about Walmart and Netflix being sued for conspiring to create a monopoly on online video rentals what? Of, of DVDs. <laughs> Uh, huh. Because Walmart uh, stopped renting DVDs over the internet and started referring customers to Netflix. Yeah, just, there, there is there is a great a great Hall of Fame of the monopolies <laughs> that everybody thought would kill us that didn't. Because, yeah, uh, there are some really funny ones in our past. Remember Blockbuster. Wow. <laughs> hey, thanks everybody who participates in our subreddit. You can submit stories and vote on them at dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com. If you hang out on Facebook a lot, well, maybe hang out on our Facebook group, facebook.com slash groups slash daily tech news show. Oh, is that the mailbag? Oh, it is, Tom. I'm glad you asked. Uh, we actually got a real, real nice email from Dwayne in Germany. Says he loved our discussion with Amos yesterday about technology in the military and how it's evolved over the years. Dwayne says, with my 21 years serving uh, in the U.S. Air Force, it brought back memories of how things were and how they are now. I'm about to retire in February, but last year I completed a 2.5 year stint as a planner building uh, bear bases in Europe and Africa. And it's so funny that once the base is up, the first thing that's complained about is Wi-Fi. Last year we had a deployed base leadership choose Wi-Fi over better beds and better quality of life items. That shows what deployed personnel priorities are like. Dwayne also weighed in on uh, our Google Fi uh, discussion from yesterday as well, formerly uh, Project Fi. Dwayne says, I've lived overseas since 2001 in Japan for eight years, South Korea for one year, now Germany for eight years. And wow, Google Fi is crazy expensive. I was looking at what a five gigabyte plan would cost me. It's 70 bucks compared to around 40 yen in Japan. I currently pay 29 euro for 15 gigabytes in Germany. I was considering jumping to Google Fi when I'm in the U.S. as a secondary number here in Europe, but that's not really financially efficient. I have O2, that's uh, his his provider here, and I was hoping to ditch my second number, uh, and I only pay seven euro for one gigabyte of data. My issue is that O2 doesn't have any deals with any of the telcos in the U.S., so it doesn't work for him. Might have to just switch a uh, second line to T-Mobile to fix my issue. Yeah, maybe if you're coming from Europe to the U.S., uh, Google Fi not such doesn't work so well deal. it is a it is a decent deal in the u.s comparatively speaking especially because uh t-mobile t-mobile gives you free roaming but at a reduced speed where fi doesn't well thank you Dwayne, uh for for the feedback it's always nice to know how things are working for people all over the world and also thanks to justin robert young for being with us uh besides uh being a bird whisperer what's been going on <laughs> oh, well, thank you, Sarah. Uh, uh, of course, everybody can sign up for my free political newsletter at freepoliticalnewsletter.com. Five stories a day, five days a week. However, you can also uh, go ahead for your holiday shopping. If you happen to be a fan of Night Attack or Jury or uh, uh, the uh, Politics, Politics, Politics podcast, the one stop for merch for your uh, 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 yourself or a friend or a loved one is stickers or D-I-A-F dot com uh that's where you can get the diamond club or sorry the the night attack pin set 10 pin or sorry uh, button set where for it's 10 buttons for for 10 bucks you have politics 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 t-shirt and our, our new politics 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 shirt the less horse uh, sorry less bs more horse s uh <laughs> t-shirt which has a great design done by one of our uh, our awesome diamond clubbers penny so go ahead and check it out that is stickers or d-i-a-f Dot com. Folks, we are but five people away of having one more patron than last month. Uh, and with two days left in the month, I know we can do this. Uh, thanks to everybody who has signed up in the past couple of days. If you didn't realize, if you become a patron or stay a patron between now and December 5th, and the, the clock is ticking on that, which is seven days away, uh, you will get a holiday postcard with a special message from the DTNS team. Uh, remember, you do have to give us your mailing address in Patreon to get that card. Uh, you can add that in your settings, or if you're signing up new, just add it right when you sign up new. If you're not comfortable giving that, we understand, that's fine. Uh, but if you do want to get the card, you will have to give us the address. Uh, so anyway, get a free holiday card, sign up, and be one of the people that pushed us over the edge and got to our goal of at least one patron more than last month at patreon.com slash DTNS. 
We also love your feedback. Feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com is where you can send those emails. We're also live Monday through Friday. If you can join us live, please do so. 4.30 p.m. Eastern, 21.30 UTC. And you can find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. Back tomorrow with Patrick Norton telling us about audio gear you might want to get. Talk to you then. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> Let me guess. He's not going to recommend Sennheisers. He might. Just don't install the software. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. Limited. Uh, my cats are doing the dog food thing again. I can hear you. Oh. Doing the dog food. Get out of the dog food cat. Bad cats. Uh, what should we call this here? We today? have... Uh, the Amazon's Amazon. Amazon, That's Amazon. Your food okay. butter. We also have uh, Walmart used to be Amazon. Amazon colon the everything store. Mm. There's also uh, if you want to do something a little more Toto ish. Uh, where is it? I just see it. The bless the spider bots down in Togo. <laughs> Once Africa uh, colon the mother of invention. Okay, what's the best one? Who is Am who is Amazon's Amazon? No. <laughs> you don't sound sure. Yeah, it's that or Amazon the Everything Store. Amazon the Everything Store just sounds like their tagline. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't, actually their slogan. doesn't sound like, like a story really. Yeah. So I, I'll go with that. Who is Amazon's Amazon? Yeah. Cool. I like it. Done. Cemented with me. Who's going to talk first? Thanks. Did you get the, the food away from them? <laughs> it's, it's in a huge bag, like, you know, it's rolled over mm -hmm. up on oh, the counter. So the cats are just kind of doing this. But you can tell that they're like, there's salmon in here. Mm. We want it. Yeah. It just goes to show you, Otis, you've got a really cool new food. <laughs> Everybody wants your new food, Otis. Everybody wants it. Yeah, they didn't really seem to care all that much about his former food. Uh, We've upgraded. I wanna, yeah. I want to thank Justin Robert Young for that excellent analysis. Uh, for, you know, from, from the point of view of a mom and pop store. That, yeah. Here, here. Uh, well, it's funny because I, for, for uh, reasons that I might be able to discuss uh, in, in the coming future, uh, I had a long conversation last night about, uh, the different ways that you sell not only to Amazon, but also to retail chains like Barnes and Noble and Target and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And uh, spoiler alert, uh, there are not only demands on what you can sell your uh, products at price wise for a lot of these big retailers. Uh, they often demand their own products and they want specific sizes, weights, titles. Uh, uh, and either you can create a product for them or you can uh, bugger off uh -huh. our friends across the that's, box. Uh, that's, that's, that's what they used to do with uh, consumer electronics stores. That's yeah. why good guys in Circuit City could sell these. Only, you know, we're the only ones that sell this model at this price is because, you know, blah, 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 same model number except for the very last uh, number or letter is different. Because they had, you know, basically a a quote unquote custom uh, model that they sold through their stores. Uh, yeah, uh, it's uh, very, very, very interesting because in the, um, you know, in, in in some of these fields, it's fairly expensive, right? And and you have to put a lot of time and effort. And when you look at the margins that you're getting. Man, are they razor thin, but you make them up on volume, right? You are well, yeah. A lot of the problem that that Amazon's getting into is not that they're setting prices or making demands on on sellers. Like you say, that's actually fairly normal. Yeah. It's that they have a marketplace that they're then saying, and you also can't sell over here. Well, because yeah. for them, they probably look at it not unlike a, a ban evasion, 
or something like on on another website. If, mm-hmm. if you are in violation, if you if you opt not to play by the rules, then you can't just, you know, set up another thing and say, all right, well, now I'm a new person. You're yeah. Like, no, you're doing the exact same stuff as you were doing before. You you can't just sock puppet your way uh, out of playing by the rules that we are setting that we're trying to set for a reason. That being said, I don't care if they are, you know, uh, uh, have all the greatest intentions and, and they are only looking at the consumer at heart. We are in a dawning age and I will focus on American politics because that is what I am most familiar with a dawning era of people wanting to understand exactly what are what what the roles of these companies have in our lives and are increasingly talking the buzz is more and more around regulation be it in the warehouses for amazon be it in how they are uh be it in how they are are doing the the marketplace and the one last thing to think about i would say is unlike facebook unlike twitter unlike uh, uh, some of these other companies that are dealing with data in a way that we don't really have existing laws for. We already got laws on the books when it comes to market share and price fixing and that kind of stuff. Like they, they, there's no one's going to need to pass anything through Congress to say, Hey, Amazon, you are running a foul of anti-competitive practices. Like these are things that you can use off the rack tools for in a way that some of these other companies uh, uh, might be able to run under, under cover of night until the legislature could kind of catch well, up. To it. But I do think the thing that is new with Amazon is the fact that they are uh, doing something that that normal retailers don't. They're running a flea market. Yeah, they're like they're like we're a mall. You know, we're a swap meet area, but we're also a retailer. We're also a big box store in the middle of that area. And, and that's where people are going, hold on. No one's ever done that before. Is it fair for you to take data from the flea market and then start selling things that undermine the market for the flea market? Is it fair for you to take somebody who used to sell you something in your big box that you sold in your big box store and tell them you either have to lower your price to us or you can't even sell it in our flea market? anymore uh unless someone gets it in you know some roundabout way uh these are all brand new questions because stores generally don't operate markets ebay ebay has storefronts to operate ebay but they don't have ebay stores yeah amazon uh is doing both they're being ebay and they're being jc penny uh sears uh, nordstrom's uh Saks fifth avenue etc those yeah. are all really and, outdated and that's purposes. the the I, I I do feel for that problem because Same man, it would it it is kind of a miracle that Amazon is as easy of a shopping experience as it is, considering how many people are 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 feeding into it. Like and, it and is- the, the going after the shopping stuff is the low hanging fruit. Wait, wait till they start going after the same things they're going after Facebook and Google about because Amazon does have a lot of data about a lot of people and it's trying and it's more and more making its money off advertising. And well, yeah, but the only the, the only difference is that unless there is a business outcry for it, most most of Amazon's data business is B2B. Uh, uh, Get more and more out out away from that though yes yes and the 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 thing that's gotten uh facebook well facebook's its own thing uh uh, in terms of the kind of data that they are using and it's also a little bit more uh in people look at it differently because it is finding you in a place that you are you know enjoying yourself theoretically right like and even google is like all right, here's, here's a tool that you are using and we are also going to show you advertising on it. I think we we perceive, whether or not we should, we perceive that if you are in a shopping mall seeing a sign for, hey, here's some other stuff to shop for is not as offensive as deceptive or manipulative ads in a place where I'm looking at my young infant nephew. Uh, I don't know, man. I think there's a scenario where all of a sudden you're seeing ads for political candidates and you find out, oh, I'm getting those ads because they know I bought this kind of stuff. I don't want political campaigns knowing what I shop for. That's creepy. 
Well, funny thing about that, that's been done forever. I mean, really, the first yeah, yeah but the, as soon as the, Amazon the ever it, the first, yeah, the, the first ever data that kind of targeted data that was pioneered by political campaigns were buying magazine subscription lists. Mm -hmm. And you would know know what you read. Yeah. Uh, uh, all right. If you're buying guns and ammo, uh, uh, we need all the guns and ammo uh, uh, subscribers that are within this district that we need to appeal to because we have a strong Second Amendment candidate and we need to make sure that we send them a flyer saying, hey, uh, not for nothing, but we all agree that the Second Amendment should be supported. Right. And then meanwhile, the opposite candidate would would have, uh, you know, other magazines that would uh be critical of of uh the proliferation of guns so and that was something that was being done in the in the 70s maybe 80s yeah i don't know but I, it doesn't matter if it was done before if it's if it's done by a tech company <laughs> well i mean I, I i do think that to me amazon will will be lower on that tier list because they are a third place player between or after google and uh, and and Facebook on that kind of stuff. I think that they are they are a massive ad resource for sellers, specifically inside their own. Well, but no, but Amazon is is more and more getting into the business of of placing ads on consumer facing sites. Oh, I, no, 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 no. I, I'm 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 aware. I'm just yeah. saying that I think that if we're looking at that specific issue, I I just find it. I I agree with that that train of thought i just think mm -hmm. it's more likely that amazon winds up getting stung for anti-competitive marketplace stuff first oh yeah in no the i think same right way that. that i think that facebook and google are more likely to find themselves getting stung by anti-competitive uh, uh stuff in in the advertising i guess where i'm going is is not that i disagree with you at all there but amazon could get stung more times as it starts to move I mean, and also amazon is probably more laid out for the, the 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 dreaded solution which would be a breakup mm -hmm. you know, that, a government mandated yeah uh, a breakup separate your retail from your aws from your etc cetera, etc cetera, etc cetera, yeah uh because a lot of their stuff is fairly segmented in a way that is independently success i mean like if if let's say all right hammer god comes down and in 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 four different scenarios the hammer hits, you know, the four big tech companies, Apple, Amazon, uh, Google and Facebook. And now they have to break up all of their top five most relevant uh, sectors into operating businesses. I think Amazon has the most businesses still standing in 10 years yeah. compared to the other companies where, you know, the other companies kind of have geese that laid the golden egg and Amazon happens to have a couple geese that are laying golden eggs. And I think, I think the other thing too, uh, is, you know, the other side of this conversation is <sighs> regulatory actions don't often really have the drastic impacts that we sort of think of when we're talking about them. Right. Like, yeah. like at and is the exception that proves the rule. It got broken up. And even then, it's pretty much reassembled, right? So maybe yeah. it was worth it because it can, it created a marketplace for long distance companies, which has led to competition, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, Microsoft never really got broken up. Uh, they made them put a browser choice window in Europe. Mm, okay. Uh, Microsoft's now competing to be the largest company in the world again, right? So yeah. I, you know, I'm not sure that these actions always have the the impact that that some people feel they will have. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I think it's also a very controversial and dangerous thing to do. It should not be done willy nilly. Uh, you know, you oftentimes these the thing with 18, the, the at and breakup for the little that I've read about it is fascinating because part of it is also that at and was protected by the government for many years and, and worked in, in league with the government for many years. So there was almost a responsibility of like, oh, OK, well, now you're being anti-competitive and we've kind of given you guys a leg up. So now we feel a responsibility to break you up because these innovations are not happening as fast as they should. Yeah. The master points out, but IE isn't the big monolith anymore in Europe. I'm not sure if that's because of the browser choice. Probably because it sucks. <laughs> yeah. Also because they don't even make it anymore. 
it's Microsoft Edge. It's Edge. Yeah. Now now you're edging throughout Europe. <laughs> <laughs> Not a verb? Okay. Moving right. on. Uh, moving on. Uh, video people, thank you for sticking with us through all of that. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. And uh, audio people, stick around. There's more to come.